the special meeting for Monday, May 19th. Uh, roll call, please. Council Member Edgar. He's running a, a bit late. He'll be here in just a moment. Council Member Gross. Here. Council Member Kusumoto. Here. Mayor Pro Tem Murphy. Here. Mayor Graham Mejia. Here. Move on to uh, public comment. We'll go ahead and open for anyone who would like to speak on any matter uh, item on the agenda for tonight. Please step up to the uh, podium. Give us your name and uh, what you're here to speak on. Honorable Council and staff, thank you. My name is Craig Durfee. I'm an advocate for distracted driving awareness in complete streets. Um, been attending a lot of meetings, and uh, I'm here today because I see OTS as mentioned in the uh, consideration for discussion today. And in that, uh, as the chief knows, there's a component for pedestrian bicycle safety. Also, um, there's a resolution that I see for tonight is tied into the uh, May 1st uh, Palm Springs event for SCAG for resolution GA 2014 2. In there in line 4, page 2, I gave the chief a copy. There's opportunity for the General Assembly will support increased enforcement of roadways, safety laws, and make all roadways use, including drivers, pedestrian, and bicycle wear, as such enforcement of efforts. We missed the first call, but the second call is due by November. In your budget considerations, I would encourage review of that uh, opportunity to apply for a grant um, to uh, adopt to the SB 99 and AB 101 bill that is moving to active transportation. Federal Highway Administration told me today they're going to put um, performance measures next year. So this is an opportunity to experiment without having to put a lot of uh, extra paperwork behind you. Um, I've attended a lot of OCTA meetings. December 17th, I was able to get multi-language and as well as distracted driving as part of the component. And you can go to uh, OCTA.net and see some of the uh, work I've done. But I'm here to encourage the um, council and the chief and all the chiefs of Orange County to uh, look at this as an opportunity. Because over this res here, this resolution, we had 10,199 fatalities, Los Angeles 45,485. And we had some in a 24-hour period. According to this, we had 36 pedestrian bicycles killed and unnecessary. I think we can do a lot better. That's so why I ask for your consideration. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to speak? Please state your name. Good afternoon. I'm uh, John Underwood. I'm the vice chair of the Los Alamitas uh, Cable Television Commission. Um, I'm here today because I do see on the agenda for today's budget meeting as one of the so-called 13 items for budget reduction consideration. And item number three, consideration of the future of the cable function of Los Alamitas Television. And um, I understand that's a broad statement and a broad palette on, on, on which to paint um, what will probably not turn out to be a very favorable picture for LATV. We've had our struggles in the past at LATV. Uh, we've had our differences. Those differences are being ironed out. We're very close to agreement. In fact, we have agreement on equipment upgrade for the studio at LATV. We have a package coming forward to present that after long uh, tribulations over how to spend our precious reserve, uh, which is now uh, at over $100,000. We uh, are very anxious to move forward. There is a producer's pool initiative of nonprofits and individual producers in the community who are willing to come forward also and work with LATV in the studio to produce programming of all kinds. And uh, that would be, you're happy to know, cost neutral to the city and to LATV. These folks are willing to put their money where their mouths are and come forward as producers and work with LATV. I hope that the city, in the, in the process, we are on the cusp of something, I think, long uh, overdue and something that um, will be very positive for the community at large. I hope that the city does consider that and does not pull the rug out from under us uh, by picking what might look like uh, uh, low-hanging fruit on the tree with our re in our reserve or in our operating uh, budget. We have a very frugal operating budget. We have $35,000, $36,000 op of operating budget. 
we actually balance our budget every year. We do not spend more than we take in. We run out of money, and then we just have to do things for free. We've, we're used to that at LATV. We've done it for many, many years now. Um, and I'm not the only one. There, are, there is a body of producers, of engineers, of, of uh, camera people, technical people, who just love our local community television station. And I hope that um, LATV, uh, in association with uh, many of the nonprofits in town and independent producers, will be allowed to go forward uh, unimpaired and be able to produce valuable local community television programming that was that LATV was intended uh, was intended for this community through LATV in the very beginning and 30 years ago we've had some very supportive city managers in the past a uh, recent city manager Jeff Stewart ha is quoted as saying that um, he believes that public access is the heart of local community television I believe that also and I hope that the city in considering its um, very important budget cuts uh, to meet its uh, shortfall will um, be reluctant to use LATV as uh, low-hanging fruit for that effort. <laughs> I'm very sensitive to this city as a small city. We all struggle to maintain our services, uh, which in many cases are second to none. There are very few cities left in Orange County that have their own cable television operation. I think there will be a lot of people in this town very disappointed if it is either um, cut off at the knees financially or, as some have uh, uh, intimated, uh, shipped out of town, which is a possibility as well, as I understand. So I hope the council, in their deliberations for this year's budget shortfall, will consider the struggles that LATV has gone through and the point at which we are now in, in our efforts to bring the community into our studio to produce programming for that very same community. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? I'll go ahead and close public comment. And before I move on to the staff report, I did want to announce that I did get a call from Rick Papp, who lives in uh, Parkwood, I believe. He said he's also not in support of the cuts uh, that were on the list for potential items. So he's got another supporter on your side, John. Okay, uh, back to staff. Could we go ahead? Uh, we're on to uh, item three, special orders of the day. Review of the fiscal year 1415, uh, special revenues, debt service, capital improvement program, and the internal service fund proposed budget and review of the general fund reserves. Staff report, please. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. Tonight we are continuing on with the budget process for fiscal year 2014-2015, our uh, second budget workshop that we have had and this uh, based on feedback and direction that we got from the council and others from the last meeting we've put together this staff report the budget subcommittee that is made up of uh, mayor pro tem richard murphy and council member troy edgar and the interim director of administrative services and myself have been meeting on uh, quite a few different occasions and have put a lot of time budget subcommittee has put a lot of time and effort into keeping us moving forward with this process, um, delving into the details, and trying to put together a recommendation from the budget subcommittee to the council and to the full community that will present a balanced budget and enable a balanced budget as we move forward into 1415. So tonight, we're gonna give you another snapshot of where we are this fiscal year. Glenn Steinbrink will go through the fiscal year 13-14 and the most recent estimate of what the surplus will, is anticipated to be at the end of this fiscal year. Um, that will lead into a discussion on the budget gap and where we are right now with our estimated budget gap as we head into fiscal year 14-15. We're going to go through a list, a detailed list of budget gap closure items that are included in the staff report and we are going to present from the budget subcommittee a recommendation of how to close that gap, the specific items that the budget subcommittee recommends to the council to adopt to close that gap. We will go through every item um, briefly to give a description, explanation of what those gap closure items are. And we'll go through the laundry list of the rest of the items that are not on the list of the budget subcommittee recommendations tonight as well. So each staff member, either myself or Glenn or the staff member, will lead through a, a brief discussion of what those items are. And we want to get direction from the council tonight on adopting 
those items to move forward into the process. We also are going to go through fund balance reserve policy discussion and a recommendation to take unallocated general fund reserves and move them into specific reserves and specific allocated portions of the general fund. And uh, we feel that this is a, as I mentioned at the last meeting, this is a, it's a great opportunity, a great time period in the city to be able to both balance the budget this year and in future years and present a long-term financial plan for the city. So it, we're excited to present the information to the council and to get the feedback from the council and the, and the rest of the community. Mm -hmm. And so Glenn will go through the PowerPoint presentation. Mainly we're looking for direction from the council tonight, so it won't be real long. He will end with questions on any special revenue funds or capital improvement project funds. And we're here, staff is here to answer any questions. The budget subcommittee as well can chime in any time that they want to, and we will get into the presentation. Could we make sure that the item that was brought forward by the gentleman for SCAG is addressed when it's appropriate? Okay. okay. With that, Glenn will go into the, his presentation of the PowerPoint. Good afternoon, Mayor, members of council, members of staff, and members of the audience. Uh, this really is a continuation of the last budget workshop that we had. We gave you a lot of information at the last budget workshop on the general fund. I'm going to continue primarily with the general fund. <clears throat> so this is a, uh, has a lot of information to go over. But I want to remind Council that we have on the budget calendar scheduled one more meeting on June the 2nd. Should we not finish with the budget workshop tonight, we have one opportunity to go over any follow-up items if needed. And then the plan is to bring to you on June 16th <clears throat> the, the fully proposed budget with all of the Council recommendations in it have a public hearing on that budget and hopefully adopt the budget on June the 16th. So our agenda for tonight, I'm going to talk about general fund reserves, but primarily I want this to be a discussion among City Council. Options to close the budget gap <clears throat> and CIP and other funds if should we get time to get to those. If not, we can carry those over to the next budget workshop. I want to start with sort of where we left off uh, from the last meeting, but I want to give you an update to that last meeting, and that is that <clears throat> if you'll remember, the numbers that I gave you at the last budget workshop were based upon the numbers that we had in the general ledger as of the end of February. Time has passed now where I was able to update those numbers to the end of April. We ha actually had some revenues that we estimated in our first pass of the budget that have already exceeded our estimates for 14, for 13, 14. So we were able to go back and adjust our expected revenues for 13, 14, as well as adjust our projected revenues for 14, 15. We're now expecting that fiscal year 13-14 we will end with with uh, an excess of revenues over expenditures in the amount of 500 and almost five hundred and nine thousand dollars that is due primarily to um, some of the factors I mentioned at the last meeting which included the insurance reimbursement for workers compensation better than expected uh, revenues from building related activities in the city and in fact I did adjust the uh, some of the building related revenues for 1314 I adjusted them upward but I did not adjust 1415 for those budget for those uh, building related revenues because <clears throat> the original numbers were given to me by public works and community development they know those revenues better than I do, so I'm, I'm sticking with their projections for 14-15. And in the second year, where our budget gap was $520,000, now it is down to 
$1,930. I didn't do a slide on the specific revenues that we adjusted, but I'd be happy to go over those if you'd like to know what they are. So right now, this is what we have in general fund reserves based upon the prior fiscal year. What I did was I took the actual budget reserves in the general fund as, or uh, I should say just the reserves in the general fund at June 30, 2013, added in the expected excess of revenues over expenditures for 13-14, and came up with an expected general fund reserve total of 8.347 million at the end of this fiscal year. We have set aside reserves for emergencies, and that's 20 percent. Risk management reserves, a half a million. Other post-employment benefit reserves of 250. Uh, CIP reserves for downtown improvements of 200,000. The rest of the reserves in the general fund are undesignated. This is what we are proposing for our general fund reserves to be as of June 30, 14. The, the reason the amount is different is because if you'll remember at the last budget workshop, I recommended the payoff of the side fund liability in PERS. That was $261,000. So I've taken that out of the reserve total that was, I'm showing as of June uh, 30th, 2014, as it is now, in anticipation that if the council approves that one item to pay out the side fund liability, we'll then begin the 14-15 fiscal year with a little over $8 million in general fund reserves. <clears throat> We're recommending that you increase the reserve for emergencies from 20% to 25%. That 25% is 25% of the general fund budgeted expenditures. That 25% number actually comes from two different sources. First of all, the, the city of Cirrus, which is in Northern California, they did a, a survey of a number of cities in California, asked them what their adopted reserve policy is. And the majority of the cities came back with the response that their reserve is set at 25 percent. There were a few greater than that. There were a few less than that. But the average was about 25 percent. So that's what most cities go by is 25 percent. The other factor as to how you arrive at that 25 percent, in the event of a catastrophic event in this city, such as an earthquake, it is recommended that you have at least three months worth of funds available in your city for emergencies because you will not be expecting to receive any reimbursement from federal, state, or county within the first three months after a major emergency like that. So you're going to be spending the city's own money and not relying upon anybody else to pay for those expenditures that you're going to incur until you start receiving reimbursement from federal, state, and county. That's what this represents. This represents the amount of money that you will need to get you by with three months of general fund expenditures in the event of an emergency. We took the risk management reserves down to 250000 The reason being there really is no rhyme or reason for the $500,000. The 250 um, is a reasonable amount based upon the size of the city. We don't expect that you'll probably ever need to dip into those funds, but it's just nice to have in case you do. The other post-employment benefit reserves, we kept the, the same, and that is basically the amount that is recommended by the actu uh, actuary at uh, June 30, 14. We took your reserve for PERS. We created that as a new reserve. You currently are funded at about 73 percent for both safety and miscellaneous in PERS. This additional 3.35 million sets aside the amount of money that you need that when added to the, the 
assets that you have in PERS will now equal 80% of your liability in PERS. The reserve for police capital is also a, a new recommendation, a new reserve, and that is basically for the um, 800 megahertz system, which is approximately $110,000 a year for each of the next four years, plus some seed money for the CAD RMS system that will be coming in 1516. <clears throat> what we plan to do with this reserve is replenish it each year with a little bit of money in anticipation of the next time you'll have to upgrade your 800 megahertz system or the next time you'll have to upgrade your CAD RMS system. If you set these monies aside for the future, then when those expenses come due, you're already prepared for that expense because you've already set the money aside. And as I say, we'll be building that reserve up over time, much as an uh, internal service fund where we'll make charges on an annual basis to the police department budget to set aside additional money for that reserve. Reserve for facilities and streets, the same thing. Um, we're setting aside seed money to fund some of these um, CIP projects that you'd like to do in this city, but that you just don't have the money to do right now. In fact, the CIP budget for fiscal year 14-15 has about $400,000 in unfunded capital projects. And... <clears throat> This then begins to set aside, again, this is the same thing, like an internal service fund. We'll make annual charges <coughs> and against the general fund or the other um, special revenue funds to start setting mon money aside to pay for these capital projects. It doesn't leave much money in the unassigned category, which is only $13,000, but what we're trying to do here is not just look at the fiscal year 14-15. We're trying to look beyond 14-15. And if the city starts thinking about some of these amounts that need to be set aside now for these future expenses that are coming, it helps set a path to put the city on a, on a path for fiscal stability for many, many years to come and still allows us to uh, balance the budget each year. I just want to mention in that reserve for facilities and streets, that 200000 we recommend funding the ADA compliance study out of that. Its estimated cost is 75000 so it would be 75000 of that 200000 is what we would recommend funding, and that would come back at a later time, the award of the contract to the council for approval, but it would allow for the funding right here. And actually, is at this time, I'd like to break and answer any questions, but we would like the City Council to, at this point, discuss these items um, to either approve or disapprove council, the uh, staff recommendations. Great. We'll bring it back to the Council. Council Member Gross, you had your finger up first. Yeah. On the, the 200000 on reserve for facilities and streets, you're already going to attack 75 of it for ADA um, for a study doesn't affect changes, it's just a study. And I think there needs to be a tighter control on that 200,000 that requires individual council action each time that we do that. I'm not sure, I'm supportive, and I realize this was a request coming from the insurance carrier. I'm very concerned that I repeatedly said we're spending money on facilities that are deteriorating and there is no plan of exit getting off this property and I would hate to spend more money trying to upgrade these facilities to make them compliant as opposed to spending that money working toward finding another location and ultimately building other facilities that are already compliant. It's just throwing money down the drain. And so <clears throat> by, by creating this facilities reserve, 
and you've outlined in there a number of things, uh, community center being one of them, where projects are needed. We've, we've already done Band-Aid work on some of these buildings and it's not getting any better. Um, we need to do something if we're going to set aside 200000 to to control ourselves on what we're spending that money on and to seriously look at where we go with it. Uh, I'm not sure that there's, uh, you know, that it's required that we have to do the ADA thing. Um, I'd like to lobby a little bit with the insurance carrier if they're saying we have to. If we have a plan of exit that uh, shows we're going to leave this property and and I've arbitrarily said five years. Uh, at this point, it's been almost 10 years since I brought that up. I would think they'd cut us a little bit of slack since whatever we're going to do uh, would be taken into account. Um, the 700,000 for police reserves, for police capital reserves, um, again, we talked at one meeting about the idea that 20 years from now, Realistically, probably less than 20 years from now, that system will have to be replaced again, and it's only prudent that we put money aside. Um, but I think, again, we need to have specific policy on what we're doing, because like the garage fund of past, um, these are going to be little mini bank accounts sitting in the reserve that are earmarked for things, but the tendency is going to be to beg and borrow out of those funds without the necessary replenishments. So we need to figure out a way that both this council and future councils um, are not permitted to do that dipping without some type of mechanism where everybody understands and buys into what we're doing in replacements. And I think that's more a policy direction um, than anything else. It's learning control, financial control of, of what you've got. The um, paying off of the PERS, the 261, uh, I think is a smart investment simply because of the uh, savings of the 215000 per year moving forward. I think it's appropriate we do that. Um, the raising of the uh, emergency reserves to 25% makes extremely good sense. Um, so from the standpoint of the fund balances, I think we're heading in the right direction. I just want to see some type of controls put into place that help us restrain from the standpoint of what we're, what we're doing, both us and staff. Thank you. Is that it? Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Uh, sure, I have a question on the uh, risk management reserve. You said no rhyme and reason for 500, so, and I know it's sort of arbitrary to 250, but what, what do, uh, maybe the, the budget committee, what do we use this for? Do you envision something for that, 250? <clears throat> I think the closest thing that we came to on the budget uh, ad hoc committee was that the, uh, if you look in the current year, 13, 14, we had a significant uptick uh, in our insurance payments that ended up being about 200,000. So, uh, you know, on average, the fluctuation up down to down 2,000, 200,000, up 200,000. So it just seemed like, from our perspective, Rich, I don't know if you had the same view, that 250 yes. just seemed reasonable. And, and it is, a, you know, it's, it's an estimate. Yeah. You know, or, or a guess, depending on what you want to call it. But it's, it's a look into the future and hope we're close. But we're, so we felt maybe the other number was just a little too high, you know, with sure. our experience and our experience as a city, that, that now, you know, this is, this is a more reasonable number at this time. So, so without a rhyme or reason, I mean, I'm just trying to look for, for why. I mean, 500 is, you know, hard to justify. Why is 250 easier? But I understand the explanation. But so it seems like to me this is really set up as a buffer that we can, without going into uh, reserves, we can say we can cover those unplanned uppers. And then when, when we have the surpluses, and do we then kind of replenish this? Is this kind of would be, I like what uh, <coughs> Council Member Gross is saying, a policy-type decision on this and, and that sort of, that, to smooth out some of these rough uh, kind of um, fluctuations. Yeah, Councilmember Kuchmato, I, I think that the one thing that, that Rich and I see too is that the thing that made us a little nervous, when you earmark 3.1 million and don't have a clear policy, we could really get into a fight. Even Can you imagine an emergency and then fighting whether it was a big enough emergency to spend the money? So the risk management pool um, had some numbers that we could at least build something and it could be a little bit more discretionary. 
but I think that, you know, the ad hoc committee or the council should take on further refinement of the details of the policy for the next six months to actually put, especially that, a 3.3, we need the mechanism to work, and we do need to talk about that 80% when we get to the right time. Mm -hmm. Thank else? you. Dean, you had something else to add? I was going to say on the insurance thing, part of the spike in the insurance is that uh, we were in a claims made basis on workers comp and we pulled away from the company that was handling that workers comp. But claims made, you have to buy tails and we shouldn't be getting into claims made policies at all. We should be into occurrence based policies which mean you're covered whenever the claim occurs. Um, I thought that I had sent through a request earlier today and, and maybe I did but didn't get a response back on it. I'd like to know by area and or uh, without personnel names how many people we've got in claims that extend back this far and what processes we're doing. You know, we had an HR person through finance at one time. We've lost some of that that was taken on by the uh, executive assistant. Um, but what are we doing with, uh, I, I'm at a loss of how many claims are still hanging in out there that caused this spike of changing over, having to buy the tail. Um, and it would help, I think, for us to have a better understanding if we're only talking two positions, uh, then that's one thing, but if we're talking six or seven or eight positions that are still hanging on, we really need to talk about internal safety and procedures and with us being in negotiations with the employee groups, maybe including some types of incentives on workplace injuries. There's many places over the years that, you know, are proud to post things. We've had, you know, 250 days without a lost injury type of thing. And maybe we need to look at in investigating into that type of a program. Yeah, Councilmember Gross, the um, question on the tail claims, that there are a handful of past tail claims that are being handled by the previous now, again, the previous insurance pool, which the city was a part of, um, CIPA, California Insurance Premium Authority. But the, if they handle the past claims, there's just a handful of those, but they are very material claims. Um, so there are especially one back in 2002, 2003, that the city is continuing to pay on and will continue to pay on for future years. That in terms of going forward, we do have the workers' compensation and the general liability under the inside the pool of Cal JPIA. Cal JPIA, California Joint Powers Insurance Authority, has a third party administrator that handles the claims for both the workers compensation and the general liability. There's a separate third party administrator or TPA for both of those current claims as we go forward. Um, the director of administrative services position under me will handle the risk management and uh, working also with the accountant. The accountant now takes in the claims, processes the claims, files the claims the risk management function will be under the Director of Administrative Services and under me. And we will be, as part of that, establishing a safety committee and working with our insurance. Um, we have a liaison, Jim Gross, that works with Cal JPIA. We work with him. We establish a risk management committee. We do need to focus in on workers' compensation and making sure that our employees are as safe as possible and that we're doing the best practices. So I feel confident that we will be and have a handle on that as we're going forward and continue to go forward with that on current claims and then past claims. Like I said, it's just a handful of claims, but they're major. And they do have an impact now and on into the future. I'd like to, at some point, independently, if necessary, take a look at those. I mean, if we got one going on 10 years, and it's going to continue on for, you know, at some point, a cap needs to be resolved or some type of settlement needs to occur uh, rather than just continue going to the bank every month. Yeah, and there is an attorney that's working on behalf of those past tail claims, working with SEPA, working also with Cal JPIA. There is a, a trade off and there is a team working together on that to try to settle those past claims. So that is the objective of those tail claims settle them, get them off the books, and close them. But there is one that's just 
extremely difficult to close out. Thank, Thank you. you. Councilmember Edgar? Yeah. <clears throat> Just as a uh, summary for this part of the presentation, uh, Councilmember Groshi talked about the, uh, the reserves and your frustration with City Hall, whether we're going to continue to put money in there. Um, you know, the one thing that we did talk about in the ad hoc committee was looking at um, what is the business case for moving City Hall. And, uh, you know, you get two to four million dollars for the property, and even if you're given a piece of property, it takes eight to ten million to build a, a facility. Um, where, you know, how long does that take to pay back? Is that feasible? But then we look at the base and we say, you know, Seal Beach went in and worked a partnership in Got Arbor Park. We reached in and got Little Cottonwood, the baseball league. You know, it, this might be a time the mayor and, uh, and previous mayor, uh, Kuzumoto, had worked very diligently in the 405 working group. There, there's groups that they're working with that uh, have a joint interest in that base. And this might be a time to start having discussions in a joint a activity because where the business case does make sense, I think, for City Hall is that you eventually can go find a mixed use facility just like the reserves have done to pull the different groups up and in, but it takes a coordination point. And so something that Rich and I were thinking about with the $200,000 reserves for the facilities, although part of that is reserved for ADA, and it was our, our, our opinion that we probably do need to, to move on that. It seems like it is pretty urgent. Um, there is a portion in that that we should look at potentially seeing it maybe lobbyist help to work the federal component for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers who owns the base and the state side, the National Guard, to see if there's an ability to expedite instead of just keep talking about it, put a plan in place, and put the business case in place. And, and that would be a good solid first step. So from my perspective and Rich is I think in the 200,000 there, I, the summary on this too, uh, Marilyn, what we would really like to try to do is this is a significant change. You know, if you think about this since 2006 and 8, you know, we were up at 8.3 million in 2006, went down to 5.1, 2009, 10. We've been clawing our way back up by circumstances and upsides that we haven't been able to properly forecast, and we're now back over 8 million. The side fund, I think we've got complete agreement. It feels like that that's the right moves to take it down to 8. But, but the major change here is that instead of just having a 100% of a budget uh, re reserve coverage almost, or at least 80 or 90% in there, we're really getting specific and saying, hey, look, let's allocate this thing out. Um, the garage fund and some of those fights will come, it, you know, but we don't think it'll be now this year because this is a really good start. The reserve policy on the PERS obviously is the most obvious thing right in front of us. Um, this protects the employees' pensions. This, from Rich and I's perspective as the ad hoc, was really important. Um, you have two choices. Uh, if you look at the PERS regulations, you can actually write the check and pay it. Um, our recommendation is you keep it in reserves because we don't, you know, we went through an MBA course with Glenn and, and on the PERS retirement re rate of return. It was more than even Rich said stop. Um, but the reality is that every year that changes, and if you look at the last 10 years, even with the worst period that they've had, they still have been able to do a decent rate of return. So I think with that amount of money in there and we aggressively look at that, we've covered the OPED, so we've covered now both sides of our potential unfunded liability. I think that's great. Um, I would like to make a soft motion just so we can claim some ground, because I think the bigger problem that Rich and I would like to talk about is on the income statement side or the general fund or the revenues versus expenses and the structural problem because in there lies the pool issue, in there lies the issue with LATV, in there lies the issue with us subsidizing the schools through the SRO officer and the joint use uh, agreements on the fields and the crossing guards, some really tough questions that we need to think about whether we're just going to start down that path or we're going to actually make some harder decisions, we need to just talk about that. and, and so. I, again, Mary, just a very soft, uh, you know, try to put a motion to get through this is, you know, could, can you guys buy off on the reserve policy? This would be our recommendation from the, the, the ad hoc committee. I, I'd like an opportunity before Absolutely. we move forward. Okay. So, Richard, why don't you go ahead? Okay. Um, really, there's two things I like here. One is we're, we're delineating what people have already kind of always known. You know, we had these PERS problems. We always thought the number was about three to three and a half million dollars. I, I, I do want to remind my colleagues that the big eye opener for us and we were we were gray that day is when Glenn really explained us that we owe 15 million dollars we don't have a three million dollar problem overall we have a 15 million dollar problem now fortunately the reserves and the investments have only given us this much of a gap that's left 
But you also have to recognize when you have a $15 million problem, if the state of California, uh, the PERS people start losing money like they did recently, that gap's going to widen and, and be made up to. So be aware that this is our gap, but it, it, it could also, if the market goes up, it, it could reduce. If it goes down, it could grow dramatically. And as you all are aware, we, we are on the hook for it. No matter what CalPERS does with their money, you know, whatever type of investments we get, whatever the return is, we're the, we're the last recourse. On the bottom numbers, I like the fact that we're, we're looking forward and being proactive and trying to get the reserve for police capital and the reserve for streets and facilities and, and start, you know, quit kicking the can down the road, I guess would be the, the best analogy. That we, know these, we know these costs are coming and we need to start accounting for them. Thank you. Okay. Glenn, let me ask you a couple of questions, just for points of clarification for those that are watching. It'll put, make it a little more simple. What was our shortfall at our last budget meeting? $520,000. Okay, and it is now? And it's now three, about $315,000. Okay, great. And then our surplus at the last meeting was? About 330000 Okay, and what is it? And now it's fi over 500000 just over 500000 So they've, they've kind of flip-flopped. Yes, they have. In, Okay, great. Um, so it puts us in a lot better position. We don't have the shortfall that we had before because we have enough in our surplus to cover that. Aside from the 700,000 that we put aside potentially for part of the megahertz, the 800 megahertz, is that correct? So what if we were to pass this reserve policy, we've got the 700 set aside for the police capital, which includes the 800 megahertz. What would be we be looking at for the outstanding? Is that where we come up with the new 315? The 315 uh, budget shortfall mm -hmm. for 1415 actually has really nothing to do with this. Okay. This is as of June 30, 2014. Your shortfall is for 1415. Okay. When? Go ahead. Real quick, the, the basic what hap I believe happens here is our our we've we're, our income's a little better than we estimated, right. which has allowed us to increase our estimates for next year. Uh -huh. So that's why you said we've, we've kind of flip-flopped. We've gotten more money this year, which increased the reserve, and it allowed us to plan on more money for next year, which has reduced the gap. Right. But, but Rich, wouldn't you agree? I mean, we're talking about the balance sheet. We're talking about savings account here. Right. Uh -huh. The incomes and expenses and surpluses are on the, um, the, the general fund side. Right. So I understand that, but we had talked yeah. about potentially taking reserve money if we couldn't offset that total 520 uh, shortfall from this upcoming year. We had talked about taking money from reserves. So I'm just trying to clarify that this new lower amount of shortfall includes the 800 megahertz or it does not? It only includes the payment that's due for the 1415 okay. year in the budget. Right. Ninja, that's all. The only reason I'm no, no, I appreciate it. There was that um, when you get to the recommendation, you're going to see that we aren't recommending using reserves to fill the shortfall. Right. Um, you know, the one payment for the 800 megahertz now is, is one, but I think the other ones that we switch gears into the, the revenue, you'll see that. Right, but for people who might be watching, and I don't know why they would <laughs> because it's very boring, but nevertheless, it gets very confusing if you're not looking at the documents. So really, I, I read our agendas for tonight, and I understand what you're saying. I'm just trying to clarify for someone who might be interested in what's going on here. And just to... Um on that point, the 800 megahertz, the portion that's in the $315,000 gap as it stands right now, uh, of the 800 megahertz in 1415 is 139,000. 139,000, okay, great. Uh, now, I, I'm not sure what the council would think about this, but I'm a little uncomfortable not having more flexibility with the reserve. Uh, when we talk about the old reserve policy for emergencies, we were at 20%, as you and I talked about today. And we're talking about moving it up not only to 25% of the reserve money, but 25% of what the budget would be for the year. So can you expound on that just a little bit for the residents, so if they're interested? <laughs> yeah, the way that we arrived at the 3.1 million here, the 25%, it is 25% of the general fund expenditure budget. So the 
amount of the reserve is going up actually for two reasons. One, because your general fund expenditures are going up, and if you take 25 percent of a bigger number, it's going to be a bigger amount of reserve, in addition to the fact that we're raising the reserves from 20 percent to 25 percent. The $2.3 million that you had set aside hasn't changed in a few years. Right. So it was not keeping pace with the growth in general fund expenditures. Mm -hmm. We're actually taking care of both problems here. Right. We're taking care of the growth in general fund expenditures and also raising it from 20 to 25 percent. Right. So what I was trying to make clear is the, uh, the past policy or the policy that we have currently that we're thinking about changing, that 20 percent was based on what was in the reserve, not what the cost of 25 percent of our total operating budget. That's why it's such a big increase. That's correct. Okay. And I had talked to um, the city manager earlier today. I feel like there should be a larger portion within the reserve that can be used for other items. Uh, as council knows, we've done uh, the give back to the community, which was going to be about $356,000, which we did very little of. I think it was 47000 for some uh, recreation for our kids during the parks, uh, extending the hours, the days, you know, the trips that they could go on, that kind of thing, which I think was a great investment in our community. But at this point, we have $13,000 that's not designated. And I, I would just ask that if there's somewhere in here that we could find uh, reducing a portion of one of these items, potentially even the 25 percent, and I'm not saying a lot, but put aside maybe 100,000 so that if we have things that we need to address, and I'll talk about it later when we get to that appropriate part, um, that we have money to deal with, you know, uh, and we can use for these other items. Because right now, if we were to have something special come up, there's nothing in this new reserve policy that allows for us, other than the uh, reserve for the capital for the police department, which we've been going over for a long time, so I'm glad to see we have that. And the 200000 set aside, that's already specifically spoken for. So uh, I'll give you an example. I I've noticed some of the parks, the pocket parks, that have not been um, really addressed in the last several years. We've done improvements at Cottonwood. We've done huge <coughs> improvements at Laurel Park. And these little pocket parks, which are utilized by a lot of the people that live in the apartments, have kind of just gone pretty much, I don't want to say neglected because Parks and Rec is taking care of them, but they haven't been updated or improved in a very long time. So I just think that if there's a possibility that we look at for the 25 percent of the total operating budget, because as Glenn said, that can go up if the uh, budget is doing well for the year and it can go down based on what we're making uh, or putting out every year. Is there a small portion of that we'd be comfortable with setting aside for the unassigned that we could maybe look at for other items that are needed within the community? But isn't that, uh, wouldn't that be, uh, Mayor, that risk uh, management reserves? Well, we kind of talked about that, but it sounds like they have very specific items that they want that to address. When I spoke with Brett earlier today, he actually said that that could potentially be included in this, but it sounds to me more like that's already spoken for, the 75000 and then, Troy, you said that there were some very specific things that you wanted that extra money to be used for. Is that correct? Uh, I, I don't think it's uh, near even 60, 70 percent allocated, so there is okay. some flexibility in there. Right. And I would say if you're going to, uh, to, to address one, you know, the, the PERS amount has probably been that 80 percent is right. the one that I think has upside risks, and I'm not sure if Rich is completely there, but I think it, you know, we'll do better in the years ahead, but okay. if you're going to take that tack, that would probably be where I would go. Okay. Well, it's just an item to, to discuss because we've got things out in the community. We've got this huge reserve. We're taking care of long-term items, which I think is commendable, but we're not, we're not taking care of certain areas that this reserve could be meant for. I know we have a capital improvement you know, schedule for seven years, but there's very little money, and there are some big improvements that need to be made to these parks to bring them up to standards. So I, I don't know. I'll leave it up to you. If you all are comfortable with the way it is, I won't belabor the point, but I just want you to be aware that those things are going to be coming in the future. I think that, that that kind of points to what I said before about an overall policy that constrains us from the standpoint of, of what funds are available. The city has to operate, continue to operate. Parks is one of the things that we provide. Police services are one of the things that we provide. 
somewhere in this process we need to be able to continue to provide services including replacement upgrades things like that and in looking at the CIP uh, there's a lot of stuff that's no funding source mm -hmm. and I don't think we've totally explored the potential of funding sources and and part of that I think uh, comes back to something that I talked about earlier is the council's involvement staff's involvement within the professional groups we're paying right now for California League of Cities dues we're paying for Orange, uh, the Orange County groups dues and yet we're not really engaged some go to some some don't go to any you know we we as a as a group of five I think really need to sit down and analyze that I've said the same thing from the standpoint of staff there's a on the warrants today there's a, a request for a, uh, an association for the um, code enforcement officer which is a part-time guy and there's some discussion within community development that perhaps we share that guy with another city they have them half time we have them half time we've got to get more creative on those kinds of things to get things done uh, or we're not going to be able to afford anything and my feeling is if if as a council we're not going to get engaged with these two associations that really are ours that we should forget about it those are good networking opportunities i know on the the league uh, previously I was on two policy committees and there were things in sitting at those meetings as Jerry has done where you'll hear things going on where one guy mentioned to me we got a a, a, a skateboard park in our city yeah. I said that's great he said it's not in our city and I said okay he said it took the city to the north and the city to the south and the three of us went together in order to make it happen and it's our park for our residents but it's in another city so I mean you learn things like that by getting engaged but those comes with commitment of time those comes with a commitment of expenses uh, in that particular process right now I don't see us doing much of that going to an annual meeting to cast a vote um, maybe going to the annual conference or something like that if we're not going to get engaged then let's back off the dues. Let's apply those to some of these other things that, that potentially need to be done. And that should be across the board. So, Thank you, Dean. You know, just to be supportive of uh, Jerry where you're at, uh, this is the right discussion, but we're having two different discussions here. The, the, the expenses for, for joining organizations, let's talk about that when we get to the general fund sure. issue. Right. This is about our, you know, Jerry, I think your point is very valid. This is our bank account. We get potential criticism in the community that we have $8 million, so why can't you fix a park? Why can't you, you know, fill a pothole? And, it, you know, what we tried to do here uh -huh. is to try to drain it down to the most critical things uh -huh. that we could substantiate to some extent, Lauren, but, you know, not 100%. But but if, if we wanted to go with your viewpoint, and I, I do support it, is we, we should, e even if we took 200000 from the PERS amount mm -hmm. and built out one of the reserves for facilities and streets, we, we haven't got to my issue that I have, which is in the CIP budget pool. Mm -hmm. um, in the same way that you want to fight for potentially, you know, the, the parks and mm -hmm. fixing them, I might want to fight for the pool before mm -hmm. we lose the water polo group. Right. Um, or, you know, vice versa, but, but that's a healthy policy place, so we should plan for that fight. Mm -hmm. um, you know this takes us to the bare bones and your point is look i'm ready to go there you know you guys got us down to the minimum amounts that there are the maximum amounts that so we can have some coverage uh -huh. do we I, I you know again i would respectfully request that we try to advance this maybe to find a middle ground with you uh -huh. put another amount into the reserves for facilities and streets and then let's fight that fight in the operating sure. budget or the CIP budget sure. where we could decide what the priority is for the community. Right. I just don't want to strap us to the point where we have no 
without a big, you know, act of the council, we have no other options. It, and again, again, the, the, the highlight of the story that we're about ready to get into on the general fund mm -hmm. is we've got more expenditures than we have revenue, mm -hmm. and we've got some real structural problems that we need to deal with that will make the ACCOC $5,000 a year <laughs> contribution seem like nothing. Right. And that's where Rich and I really want to get us to here in this discussion. Right. But, so again, I'm, I'm going to try again. Could, could, is there an amount that the, the, all of us on the council would be happy to put maybe into the reserve facilities and decide that that is a discretionary amount. We could fight it out in the CIP budget, uh, streets, pool, parks. Yeah. I mean, that, and then we can kind of go from there. And I would make a motion, well, I'll make a recommendation that, as you said, instead of taking it from the 25%, uh, even though that fluctuates, uh, maybe another 200,000 from the PERS reserve into the reserve for facilities and street capital outlay. Are you comfortable with that? And Rich, are you? I mean, you yeah. got into it too. I, I, I'm struggling with a different issue, and that is, to me, the parks are a very foreseeable cost. Mm -hmm. The repair of the parks, and I think Glenn and Brett are trying to get us there, that our budget going forward is going to look at, at these type of items. Mm -hmm. That, to me, I mean, this, this picture of the reserves kind of, what it does for me is it shows that we're not, we're not as rosy as we've always kind of thought. I mean, I think we've all kind of known that. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't even remember as a candidate, people were saying, you know, yeah, there is, there is a certain amount of, of uh, you know, PERS reserve that we know we owe. Mm -hmm. As I said before, we, we thought it was $3 million. We didn't know our whole, our whole liability was 15 Right. And uh, that was a very shocking day. You know, we, we, we both looked at each other like, oh, you're kidding me. Um, you know, we'd always been comfortable with the three million that we had the reserve to cover the three million. Mm -hmm. uh, fortunately, you know, I mean, the prior council has councils have done a good job to get us to this point. It it's what I'm looking at with the parks, though, is that that is an expense mm -hmm. that we should be able to plan for, and budget, and figure out how to use our money to pay for the parks. And I think it's an important use of money. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not saying I'm against the parks in any right. way. But well, I'll give you an example just real quickly so you'll understand where I'm coming from, then we can move forward. Mm -hmm. um, I visited a little pocket park in my neighborhood, and if you think at it per capita in the apartments, there's a lot more use of those parks than there is in just a neighborhood. Um, and a lot of the mothers and fathers with younger children go to those small pocket parks because they're easier to get to and from, and if their kids have to go potty, they can get them home in time because nobody wants a potty accident. But nevertheless, um, just to replace say the wood chips yeah, with rubber that. is yeah. significant and that's not planned for in our CIP and it and there's so many issues that would bring those parks up to um, what I would consider safe for, for our children um, like I said we've already done the fencing and the basketball carts at Oral Lewis Park we put 280,000 into Laurel we've replaced the uh, playground equipment and put another gazebo at Cottonwood these little parks have kind of gone unseen and all I'm asking for is the consideration it doesn't have to go for those as Troy said we could fight it out but as long as it's there and it's it's uh, available to us to do that that's that's all I'm asking and, and the money you know we we do make 12 million dollars I mean it's just a question of how we spend it right. so within the within the annual budget the money is there it's just our decision-making process of of what goes sure I mean basically I, you know we're break-even city mm -hmm. something comes in something you know we're ranking the importance of what the expenditures are, and unfortunately, right. a lot of the rankings are done for us. It doesn't mm -hmm. leave us a whole lot of discretion. That's why I'm asking for the extra money, because then the items that come to us that are not built into our budget that the people are saying, hey, we feel like this is not adequate, we have the flexibility within our reserve to say, if we think it's important enough, we can address these issues. That's all I'm asking. Hey, Jerry, I'm going to have the same argument with you with Great. the pool. Okay. I'm going to say, and with the streets, where I think we yeah, barely absolutely. fund only what we get in grants. We don't mm -hmm. actually put more money into it. Right. So we're going to be discussing the alley, too, that's you know coming up for the next CAP. So how would we, uh, city manager, how would we go about polling if, the council, I guess? If it is the consensus of the council to take $200,000 from the recommended, right now, recommended reserve for PERS 80%, we can move 200000 into the 200000 reserve for facilities and streets, make that 400,000. As Glenn mentioned, that the intention of the, what our intention is, is to bring back a fund balance policy to mm -hmm. the council eventually. 
based on feedback but eventual approval by the council of the full policy. Right. So we could include that in as 400000 and that 400000 could also be an internal service fund where we're replenishing it. Mm -hmm. So depending on projects that come up Perfect. over the over the year that the council agrees on, that would enable a pot of money to be funded. Perfect. So would we just go ahead and pull the council of deans? I was going to say, rather than putting the 200, and I'm, I'm supportive of you going that way, rather than putting the 200 into something that's already established as reserved for facilities and streets, mm -hmm. which makes it seem like it's intended for that, why don't you take the 200000 and put it in the under, unassigned, which leaves you with unassigned balance of $213,000, and that gives you more ability in an unassigned area to do that. And I think the finance director said at our last meeting we were at 76%? 73. 73. 73. So this is, a, this is a bump up to the 80% at this particular point which is recommended. That's so taking 200000 out of it is going to put us back down to about the area where we were? No, it will take us back down to 79% oh, okay. All right. Right. All right. instead of 80 Then the other part to, to bring up, you know, we, um, we think that we will be able to add to that within the next fiscal year based on the returns two years ago. Two, PERS is two-year lag. So um, it, we can depending on the fund balance policy that we bring back and the council approves, what we would recommend is to take either a combination of surplus, if there is one in any fiscal year, or if that 80 percent, if we're more than funded in the 80 percent, replenish these reserves that right. the council agrees on to establish. So I, I mean the only thing about putting it in, adding it into the unassigned, the disadvantage is, is you're not setting it up as an internal service fund, so you're not replenishing that. That's the only disadvantage. Oh. So if you put it into the reserve for facilities and streets, and maybe as uh, Councilmember Edgar suggests, uh, broaden that, so, you know, call it other things, parks, and broaden that, mm -hmm. then you're replenishing that fund. You're establishing a long-term mm -hmm. fiscal sustainability. That, that's the advantage of adding to okay, it. Okay, so that would be my recommendation to uh, have the council either support or not support. Warren, where do you stand on potentially putting the 200 from the PERS reserve into the reserve for facility streets, capital, and parks? Uh, I, I generally support that. I guess sort of just kind of um, um, the replenishment, along with the policy then, this reserve for facility street, capital outlay, parks, and pools, and whatever, um, <laughs> would, would you envision it uh, pegged to some kind of percentage of the overall reserves or percentage of the um, uh, uh, expenditures? I, I'm just trying to look at, to, you know, it, it seems sort of arbitrary, 200, 305, you know, pick a number, and, <laughs> it, and, it, and it doesn't feel right to me. You know, Warren, I, and I definitely don't want to step in the way of staff, but I, I, I think that category, I think as many of them as we can, we need to establish a funding mechanism. I don't think that right. one is a percentage of budget, but I think, you know, just like Agreed. we do with the garage fund, it's a percentage tax across all departments to fund that. That means we have to plan for it in the op budgets. Each department head has to account for that. Right, and but but, um, but that'd be the inflow into it, right? But I'm just saying, at what point do you hit a ceiling and you say, hey, let's stop, let's stop funding this thing? Because uh, you know we get into the same problem. We have a whole bunch of money that you know kind of using doesn't you know kind of we get into food fights about, which is not the healthiest thing to do, right? Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so do you envision some kind of a ceiling on on? It depends on the fund balance policy that the council adopts. But I mean, if it's four hundred thousand and we put that in the direction of the council is to put that in as the ceiling, we can define that. And the the but recommendation, if we have surplus in any one fiscal year or monies to transfer out of that reserve for PERS 80 percent, replenish that 25 percent first, the, you know, get that reserve for emergencies at 25 percent of the general fund budget first, and then depending on the council consensus, replenish the other reserves. So, so just kind of, I, I'm in favor of the concept, but I think that like, like uh, Glenn pointed out, the 2.3 million that was established way back when kind of stays stagnant. Are we running the same risk? So that's, that's just consider that in, in coming back with a policy. Uh, I'm not going to get too hung up on it, but, but think about the future, right? Five years from now, ten years from now, if we have that, and it has to grow to 520 or, you know, 600 because that's just the nature of, you know, uh, 
cost expenses. Um, what, what's that number need to be as a function of wherever we are? Not not just some hard number because, you know, ten years from now, four hundred thousand may not be enough to do whatever we wanted to do. Uh, what was intended here. So th that's my only comment. So, and, and, but I'm in favor of. All right, Dean. Yeah, I think that's. I think I've explained. Okay, Troy. So, yeah, so I'm just go ahead. Do you mean a motion, or do we have to? Well, let's go with that. Do we need to make a motion, or just make the correction on? Oh, I think we have the direction. We'll just we'll move 200 from the 80 percent into the reserve for facilities and streets, and we'll broaden no, that no definition of that category. And then the the policy that comes back to us will sort of kind of encompass all the discussion you heard here. And yeah. we are going to have a separate facilities discussion down the road, correct? Yes. Okay. Which will be housed in the reserve for facilities and streets uh, because that'll that become a specific reserve item okay. with an amount budgeted. Okay. All right. Okay, I want to back up very quickly to this because I want to bring up a point here, and that is <clears throat> our surplus is 508,000 for 1314. Mm -hmm. Our shortfall is 315 for 1415. It was actually the budget subcommittee said, and I agree with them, that just transferring that surplus over to cover the shortfall in the following year fixes one year. Mm -hmm. That doesn't solve the structural deficit that you have in your budget. So while council can certainly consider taking any portion of that surplus for 13-14 and using it to close the gap, mm -hmm. What the budget subcommittee looked at was long-term solutions to the structural deficit that you have in your budget. So many of these are revenue-raising proposals that will carry over from year to year and help reduce that structural deficit. Mm -hmm. So these, again, the shortfall is three, about 315000 <coughs> These are the options as recommended by the Budget Subcommittee. I'm going to be providing with, for you on the next slide a list of all of the options available that we came up with, but these are the specific ones that were pulled out by the Budget Subcommittee and recommended to close that gap. <clears throat> the parking, for example, would carry on from year to year. Can you, help me, can you help me understand where that parking is and what we're talking about? Let me, um, on this, what we wanted to do is go through, as I mentioned at the beginning, this is the budget subcommittee recommendation. This is the list. We want to go through briefly each item on that list to help the council understand what each item is. Uh, I have three of the items, so if I can start with mine and then I'm going to turn it over to S Stephen Mendoza, the Director of Community Development to go over the parking so you, you guys can understand that portion of the gap closure. The diversification of the city's investment for portfolio, $20,000, um, we think that that's low-hanging fruit in terms of being able to diversify within the current investment policy, which is, which is tight. I mean, it's very fiscally conservative, which is a good thing. We think we can uh, diversify the portfolio and, and get $20,000 in investment income in this next fiscal year. We may be able, to, we plan on bringing back an investment policy recommended by staff to the council to loosen it up a little bit, still keep it very fiscally conservative, but we may be able to generate more than 20000 The 20000 is very conservative. The $60,000 that Troy had mentioned consideration to eliminate funding for the crossing guard as we you know, talk about opening this up I mean every almost everything is potentially on the table for discussion when we talk about closing the gap for the long term and we have on the table the consideration to eliminate funding for the crossing guards we currently pay approximately sixty thousand dollars annually the school district does not pay any of that right now and the potential is there for either cutting it completely or talking about it with the school district, especially as it ties in to discussions we're taking place right now on the joint use agreement. The individual joint use agreements and the master joint use agreements, those involve significant costs that the city will incur in the future that are not in the budget right now. So we want to put that on the table as part of the discussion. That's the recommendation to consideration eliminating the crossing guards at 60,000. 
the payoff of the side fund of liability in PERS, I think that we have consensus right now, the council, that is an annual savings of $12,500, which reduces the gap. And, uh, we'll have Corey talk about the potential for elimination of donated services at the special events. The additional cuts in appropriation across all departments, the just under $84,000 staff has gone back and um, with a fine tooth comb once again reduced as much as possible what we think by department we can reduce and that's eighty four thousand dollars there are three um, items in there that the council needs to be aware of I mean two of them have been mentioned by councilmember gross today that the elimination potential elimination of the dues and memberships to the ACC OC that's about seventy three hundred dollars annually that's in that $84,000. Um, there's also about $2,400 in potential elimination for the Human Relations Committee funding that the city has historically funded annually. That's in there. And there is one that I wanted Todd to talk about. It's, it's, it's a sensitive item, but we had it on the list because every department went back and put together a list of what could go uh, if needed. But there is funding for a trauma intervention at about $1,500 mm -hmm. that's also included in that list. I'm going to have Todd just briefly talk about that so Council's fully aware of what, what's on that list. Todd. Okay. Sure. The, the uh, trauma intervention program, uh, those are the folks that we call out uh, to uh, traumatic events uh, when they're, they, they typically, uh, not always, but they often involve a death in the family or a fatal traffic accident when there's emotional trauma being suffered. And these folks come out and they provide emotional first aid. Um, they, they do provide a very valuable service. Uh, it takes a significant burden off of our personnel. And uh, over the course of this fiscal year, uh, they've, uh, they've been called out 14 times. Mm -hmm. um, it's about $1,500. It's 12 cents per capita. So uh, that's, that's the cost. Um, it, it's... Uh, it, it's, it's a service that, uh, that we wouldn't necessarily want to see go away. Mm -hmm. um, however, when we went back and looked at you know, what, what we could give up, that was on the list. Okay. And um, let me have Stephen now go through the description of the 131,300 potential future revenue, and then we can get council uh, feedback or the budget subcommittee may want to also weigh in after Stephen talks about that revenue source. Mayor and council, thank you very much. There are currently 75 nose in street spaces along Cherry, Reagan, and Florista. There are also 26 parking spaces in a city owned lot um, just adjacent between Reagan and Pine. Those uh, thus far have gone. We basically giving away free parking. Uh, many, the surgical center in Los Alamitos and now the Los Alamitos Medical Center will soon be parking and we'll still be giving it away for free. In some very conservative estimates of using 25 cents per 15 minutes and, um, and uh, assuming it would only be, f a parking space would only be occupied 50% of the time, the revenue is over um, um, $131,000. That's 50% occupancy. It would be double that if we thought we would have 100% occupancy, and it still doesn't include weekends. Mm -hmm. So we've been very conservative with, the, with these estimates of trying to obtain a lost revenue source that the city has been giving away for many, many years. Um, again, budgeting very, very conservatively. Then we also have the cost estimates for the potential installation of the units as well. And the, the, those cost estimates go around um, $90,000 for um, the capital costs, assuming for the 75 spaces we would use individual meters, and then the 26 spaces we would use a kiosk. We certainly could go a kiosk on the others as well and lower that cost dramatically. A kiosk um, that would deal multiple spaces would be $7,100. Mm -hmm. So if you had every five spaces you had a kiosk, you can reduce that capital that uh, originally said of $97,000 <coughs> to start this entire thing up. So $97,000 the first year, but you'll recover that the first year, and then you have an ongoing annual revenue stream after that. With that, um, Tori and Richard, do you want to talk about this list before we go to the full council for feedback? 
Well, I think the, uh, for the 131,000, one of my actions in the ad hoc committee was to talk to the hospital. So I talked to Scott Rifkin to see if they had an issue with us. Uh, you know, it, it's funny, is it? It's not funny, but one of the biggest <laughs> areas that we have uh, wars are, are curb painting wars, right? That, that, that we adjudicate that through our traffic commission that ends up with us and no one's ever happy. Um, but I think the theme there was that, you know, a lot of times long time pe people were parking in front of businesses and limiting the amount of revenue potentially because they can't find a place to stop and go in. Uh, Scott and the, and the hospital were very supportive of this potential initiative because um, you've got a little bit of an arbitrage between free and, and paying. Um, you know, if you look even on uh, Cherry, there's a, a medical building in the corner of uh, Cherry and Florista. And they have a kiosk. I, I will say if you are a patron, it's a pain in the butt for a kiosk. You got to go up, pay your ticket, wait in line, pray it works, and come back, put it in your window so no one writes you a ticket, and then go in. I, it, it just seems, I, if, if we're really going to do it to try and help with revenue, it seems like the metered way would be the way, because it's easy to enforce, it's easy to help people get in and out. Um, again, the hospital looks at it as they don't want their long-term employees parking in front of businesses. They really want to try and get a handle on that, too. So I, 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 you know, I think we, we felt pretty good about the process there. And when we first seen the number in the ad hoc committee, you know, it was like, okay, great number, but there was no cost associated with it. So Stephen, very quickly, and I, I think I had even seen some sort of a staff report that he had uh, put together very diligently, if you guys are interested in more detail of, of how long it takes and the cost, et cetera. As a point of being on one of the charity boards there, um, but, you know, on uh, Reagan, I think the, the little bit of the fear is that, you know, we have a couple of very active charity leaders that might not appreciate um, whether they might have to have people pay in front of their place. And if you left it free, they would really have a bigger parking problem because free is a lot better than paying. Mm -hmm. So um, we really need to think through the repercussions in Charity Row there and make sure that uh, we get the buy-in from the stakeholders on which direction that they would want to go. But I, I still think the estimates are conservative here and I think it's a real number. Can I can I add something just and then I'll let you go, sure. Rich. Take into consideration when Troy says, you know, the hassle that you have to go through, that's true. But many times we've gone to the doctors and you're in there far longer than you ever expected and that you incur a ticket. So I think that the kiosks, on the other hand, charge you for the time that you're there, if that if I'm Correct. That's at least on the cherry you corner. You have to guess when you, I think I'm going to be in there for an hour and you pay for an hour up front. A lot of times they don't seem to work that well. Yeah. Well, maybe we should do something to make sure that we allow enough, you know, I don't want to see people getting tickets for this. It's not for us to generate money that way. So let's make sure we go with the right fit for the city. Go ahead, Richard. Okay. I just, overall, once we discovered what the gap was, our goal was to balance the budget and not raise taxes. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think that's always the always the goal. But uh, you know, I want to I want to thank everybody who I can see on one eyesight here: Corey, Chief, Cassie, and a very dapper Mr. Brandeberry there in the back. You know, coming up with eighty-four thousand dollars of cuts really goes goes a long way. You know, it's uh, over over twenty-five percent of of closing the gap and, and thank you for your efforts on that behalf. Um, the parking meter is the biggest number obviously. It, it, uh, there's more information to get out I think Stephen would be correct you know that, that um, right now we're really just looking for the go ahead to say it's worth investigating because you know what this this to me this is the hour right now that we all earn our money for the year <laughs> you know the, these are the decisions that that really need need to get made and that's that's to to, to close the gap how do we do that and there's some tough choices up there mm -hmm. I mean eliminating the crossing guards was not just a throw out you know but it's it's not something that a lot of cities provide and you know, some, some of the others are a little bit easier. Diversifying the investment portfolio, that doesn't really affect anybody. Payoff of the purse fund is just simple interest rate arbitrage. It's simple enough. And eliminating the donated services at special events, while not a big number, it does kind of create, a, uh, in my mind, a fairness that we're not deciding who gets, who gets a benefit. And then, of course, you get the, oh, he knows this one, this you know, who knows who type of thing. Just it's not something we can afford at this point. And so we're going to treat everybody equally, mm -hmm. equally poorly, as it turns out, but, <laughs> but equally. Um, so and then, you know, we're, we're still a, a little bit short. 
and uh, you know, so we're looking to the group for for what else is 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 a possibility. All right. Well, I'll I'll take a stab at this. I I agree with the uh, parking for the medical center, uh, diversifying the portfolio. Um, I went with leasing the city-owned land for electronic bill billboard. That was a significant amount, $50,000. Um, the annual cost of the crossing guard uh, with the school district, right now we're working on those uh, umbrella agreements to kind of find a fair share somewhere in there. So in my, in my deductions, I cut that in half from 60 to 30. And then I also... Uh, included cuts in appropriations across all departments and the amount I came up was three hundred and fifteen thousand two hundred and ten dollars so it's a couple of different items that maybe what you all chose but it uh, took away less in my mind from either the groups in the city that benefit from us or or the residents and the businesses so my uh, my recommendation again would be uh, Changes in the parking, a charge for the parking in the medical center, diversify the portfolio, uh, pay off the side fund. I agree with that. I didn't have mine in there, uh, that in there, but I, I'm comfortable with including that. Annual cost of the crossing guard, uh, sharing that cost at 30000 with the school board. Uh, leasing the city owned land for electronic billboards. That seems to me something that's uh, an up and coming thing. I know that we're talking about it at Vector. It's in a way to um, generate more funds for the city or, in this case, the district uh, with Vector. And then the cuts across the board. Um, I hate to see some of these go, but maybe if we were to uh, tweak this just a little bit, we could keep some of those. Uh, I, I do like it's TIP, correct? Yeah, I do like the idea of TIP for our residents. And so I, too, when I went through this, looked at it and said, okay, what's going to least directly impact our community? And, and I think those would be the recommendations that I would go with. And if I just could, we agree with you 100% on the sign. We just don't know if we can get it in the budget for yeah. the, the next year. That, uh -huh. was, yeah. that was the only, that, I mean, to, to us, that's a freebie. You know, yeah, we, and we wanted to, I mean, we can keep going through the rest of the council comments, but then we do have a laundry list of all of them, too, which includes the billboard signs right. as well. Okay. What? Jerry, can I ask you a question? Sure. Did just to, to, so you basically have traded out the, the sign for the cro for half of the crossing guard. Um, a question for yourself and Councilmember Kuzmeta. You guys are on the uh, ad hoc working group. Something that we analyzed kind of on the side, probably not asked, but we did take a look at it, is the joint use agreements mm -hmm. with the schools you guys are adjudicating through an agreement to bring to us. Right. Um, the business case there um, is, is a little bit concerning. And, mm -hmm. and so let me tell you how we got to the 60 and why we went all in versus 30, because we started at 30. We did. Okay. Um, if you look at the joint use agreements right now, in this budget, we actually have 30,000, 32 of 64, which you'll see down the road, that was actually incremental because we signed up to a higher level of quality on the uh -huh, fields. Uh -huh. That was like two and a half people in Parks and or Public Works. But there's another 60,000 coming because in the same way we want parity to not pay for crossing guards because mm -hmm. we're not the school, they want us to pick up a bigger share, and that right. number is 60. Yes, it so comes out to about 100,000 total with all of the cuts and what we would be paying more on right. and, and taking less of, so yes. So to give right. you guys tools, and, and I'm very interested in where you actually sit, because they wouldn't tell us the details, so it would have been a Brown Act violation. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, we, we were thinking is if we go in for 60, you guys are going to have the tough discussion on the field, and we should expect to lose that. We should expect that we will probably have to pay another 60. So you net that out, you know, if you take in the ins and outs, we're still down 30 mm -hmm. even after we cut the crossing guard. So the question is, how much are we down? Mm -hmm. So again, just, you know, I don't know if you guys... We asked that very specific question. Okay. And it's we were very hard line with them. I said, listen, you know, you're not talking about a minimal amount. We're talking about $65,000 for employees. We're talking about an increased amount of the... Uh, electricity going to you as opposed to to us when we got the full and so that's what I'm saying when it came down to it it was about a hundred thousand dollars and so we're we're very interested in seeing where there's going to be some flex with that because I personally don't know that I can support four new employees uh, for for that and that was not something that was discussed in dollars and cents when we were going through this process but we are keenly aware of that and we're open to I am open to any kind of strategies that the council would uh, prefer for us to use because I've been pretty clear with them mm -hmm. uh, at least from my perspective I can't discuss it you know mm -hmm. beyond myself 
but they also are wanting a shared plan with the uh, gym. And I said, absolutely not. We mm -hmm. have it in perpetuity. We just gave you $300,000. Thanks for the extra bathroom. But we said, and I specifically told them at the meeting, I said, as long as you understand, we're not going to be giving you any money beyond this point. This is a one-time give because we use those facilities and it will upgrade it for our residents. Mm -hmm. So we, we are on the same page. So if you net out the timing with the the issue with the, the billboard thing mm -hmm. and then you if you see us all in at 60 if you can support that you guys have the flexibility in your joint use agreements even if we lost totally and did the 60 we would be only down net 40 mm -hmm. based on your hundred thousand mm -hmm. um, again I'd respectfully request that you guys please consider the 60 but but whatever sure, you guys want sure. to do well and and two we don't necessarily I mean for myself I don't necessarily know that I support for part-time employees I think there's different a different way we could go at that where maybe we could get an expert, which is what was discussed with some of the user groups. Please get someone who's an expert in fields. Maybe we can get somebody who uh, costs us less, who's part time, who because of their knowledge is just an all around better employee for that position. Would you guys want to pass a budget where you pass it this way, but it leaves it to staff and the ad hoc to actually negotiate the final because this would be the better case scenario you know at least this would be funded mm -hmm. um, but, but I mean we're gonna have to make a budget because of our timing June 30th is coming we've got to make a recommendation so we'd actually if we go with this this is what the number is and then staff's got to really kind of work their butt off with you guys to be able to get through some sort of an agreement fast right right but okay all right anyone I'll, Dean? I'll just chime in I think the the uh, items that you've gone through um, we've essentially eliminated the parcel tax idea mm -hmm. uh, we've eliminated the utility user tax idea um, the charge on city property I'd be a little concerned from the standpoint of the area because I've had complaints from the nonprofits that are over on Pine uh, I'm sorry on Reagan that they're still getting hospital employees and hospital says no but everybody that's in a colored suit or colored smock or something to that effect is a doctor's office looks like it's hospital um, I think there's plenty of area all the way around over there where parking meters are appropriate simply because they're going to be charged four bucks for parking at the hospital structure and they're going to do the same thing that they're doing right now they don't want to go to the off-site parking that's going to be gone so they're going to go everywhere they can to try and do it traffic commission wise we put in two hour parking uh, throughout the city and four hour parking now at one of the parks we almost need to look at that process and see exactly where you know is it just simply the hospital zone we put in green curbs all up and down uh, Los Alamitos Boulevard from the high school in order to keep the kids from parking in there we did the same thing on Brighaman on Serpentine all of these other places and we're, we're rapidly getting to a point where we're running into that kind of an issue so I really think maybe that needs to go back to the traffic commission have them make some decisions and recommendations back to us of how broad we know the immediate area but how broad other can we go in that process and and again I think it's only appropriate that, that we look at that from that standpoint the diversification of the portfolio absolutely um, we've taken off the table the consideration of the uh, 20 grand for LATV um, the leasing of the billboards I'm in favor of um, again I recognize the long term on that the school crossing guard issue I'm in favor of the payoff on the CalPERS thing I'm in favor of um, eliminating the donated services at special events I don't think is totally clear uh, what that means and I know that we recently approved um, the June 6 thing coming up with with um, sugar beet festival mm -hmm. but I think we need to have for us to take action on it we need to be defined on what and where that 7,000 is it would just be helpful to me um, renegotiating the youth center agreement in the both capital and operating costs uh, I that's apparently off the table there was no amount done but I think it's something that needs to be done 
simply because there is no other nonprofit that gets utilities and, and rent and everything else free anywhere else in the city. So it, in fairness, uh, it's something I think needs to be put back on the table and looked at. Um, the pass along of credit card processing costs to consumers at 9000 uh, that's apparently off the table. I think that should be back on the table. Um, if, if they're paying with credit cards on stuff and there's a fee, there's many places that do pass that along. Yeah, let me just clarify. I mean, th these are just the recommendations that you see before your budget subcommittee, but that doesn't mean that the rest of the items are off the table. It's, oh, okay. We wanted to put that list up there as well. We both think we, we, we put the 9000 in on the yeah, credit we, cards. We clearly don't see it, and, and, yeah. and we agree on that bottom line number, but I thought that the credit card was in there. Uh, okay. yeah. I, I don't support that, just for calling. But we can go through that one. Right, right. right. The other thing that would help from our standpoint for the 83,000 um, is to know what that really is. Because the TIP program, we do think, you know, at least I think is important. Uh, there's other programs that are sitting there that I'm not convinced are valid programs that we need to be involved in. I don't want to get down to to micromanaging what the departments do. That's why I asked earlier, is there a flat fee across the board? Everybody has to cut 10%. Um, you know, you mentioned fairness, but apparently it's not been fair uh, from the standpoint of which departments get get what, what, what cuts. So at least I'd like to know what the 83 amounts to and, and be able to weigh in a little bit from the standpoint of what we think Council-wise, is important services for the community. Um, other than that, Dean, if I may, yeah. absolutely. Um, to respond, that eighty-nine thousand is one percent of the operating budget. It was kind of an edict number that we um, tried to leave Jeff or Jeff uh, Brad with <laughs> to be able to go through. Sorry, uh, to deal with staff because we didn't want to get into their business. Um, in, into the details. Um, so I, I would say we took more hands off. That's an issue. Go f see what you can find. You know, the thing that's buried in there that you need to realize though is under council budgets, ACCOC, and, and some of those. TIP is an easier one to talk about because it's, it's real and it's a function that it probably outpaces the value outpace of what we pay. Mm -hmm. But some of the other ones politically are a little bit tough because even if you don't think we're fully engaged in ACCOC or some of these, um, we also need seats at the table when it comes to being able to go through the votes on different boards and commissions at the regional level that you kind of lose a voice too, but, um, or, you know, at least less influence. But I think all of those areas, that 89 was there. The uh, the one number that you asked about, the 7,000, let's talk about that because it's worth having a discussion on the donated services. Um, Jerry and I probably have epitomized a couple times since we've been on the council fighting over does the chamber get you know, free overtime from the police. So what about traffic control? Does the beat festival now? Uh, what happens at 4th of July? You know, all of those things, uh, you know, I think again, we're just starting to scratch the surface, but Rich always says, hey, we're not kicking the can down. We're starting to cut into bone. And because after you get past that 7,000 of in-kind services for events that usually are fairly profitable, um, then you get into, do you want to still have the youth center here? Then you get into, I mean, it, it starts getting serious really quickly. So what we tried to do is to save the council at least a first step to say, we need to start weighing into the serious long-term strategy items. If, if you have an issue with this, then you're going to hate what's coming. <laughs> and, and, and it's a hard one because we're all members. I remember, you know, the chamber really does some, you know. Great things. Yeah. So anyway, that, that that's what it is. And if, I think $4,500 wings, wheels, and rotors is a, a part of that, Landine, which is something very dear to you, and um, you know, and then some of the other events out there. So I think you know, and actually, I think it probably is a little bit over $7,500 or $7,000 a year with the police provide that we write off. Okay. Uh, before we, uh, I'm going to come to you, Warren, in just a second. We're almost to the time for the regular meeting to start. So after Warren goes, do we want to? Uh, Take a 15 minute break before we start the next meeting. How far off do you guys think we are to close? Uh, how much more do we have to see? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean we're, we're yeah we don't have that much. If we get Warren's comments okay. and then can go right. through that, um, 
briefly the other list if you guys want to go through the the other items that have been mentioned on the list we can See, do and that. that's what I'm saying I'd like to go into that more in depth I don't think we're gonna get it done in 15 minutes I just don't want to stop right in the middle of one item okay Warren why don't you go ahead okay so uh, thank you mayor and uh, so um, I, I, I'm in favor of these reductions uh, or the savings <laughs> where, where we can scrape them out the the, re the revenue enhancement, though, um, I, I guess I would challenge the uh, staff on the parking. W why limit it to that one area? I mean, if, if, if it's fair for that area, I mean, we ought to, we ought to look at it all over the city. I think what uh, I think uh, uh, Councilmember Gross had mentioned, the Traffic Commission probably would be the place for that. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, I would like to see what's the five-year cost of, of this kind of, uh, you know, implementing this. So there's a revenue stream of, just based on the model, you have 130000 but But what's the cost? I know you have that asterisk there, and you don't know what it is. But uh, much like the 800 megahertz uh, system, if you own the system that you're buying for parking, whether it's individual meters or kiosks, there's going to be some replacement costs, right? Yeah, the annual um, operating cost would be $2,700 for the configuration that I've mentioned in previously, which comes to be about 1900 a month. But that's for how long, I mean, how many years will that last? What's the lifetime of such a system? Uh, that's, I mean, that's, that's a question, yeah. right? So I'm not looking for the Those answer, are things to research and, right. and, and to get better at knowing, yeah. Right. But so those are the, the, the cost of uh, replacing that technology that will, will have to happen. The, um, uh, the surcharge on credit card usage, um, I, you know, I, I recognize is what, 2.7 to 3 percent per transaction, and that is a cost to, to the city here, and, and I think we ought to recoup that in some way. And if it's, if it's raised fees for everybody or, or at the surcharge, I think whichever way, as long as it nets out, because why, why would we, I guess, um, take that cost on? So that would be my uh, position on those two items. So with that, I'll back to you, Mayor. All right. Anyone else? Okay, so Brett, how do you want to go about this? Do you want to? If the council wants us to go quickly through the other list, um, we can go through that and give an explanation of what those items are and try to get direction on the, from the council on which ones we want to. Troy, what do you have? Yeah, to Mayor, add? just a recommendation. I mean, if we can do it kind of crossfire style, mm -hmm. you know, Dean went through fairly quickly. Um, you know, things. I, I think you'll hear what I just heard from Warren is if we go to that list, even you can kind of look through and see if there's anything left to talk about. Uh -huh. And then if not, then we were fairly close to closing. And the good news about this story is we still haven't dipped into the 300000 for the 800 megahertz yet. We've actually paid for it with cuts that are sustainable. Right. I think that do we want to go through and agree on the list? Because there were things that I know that we can't include the electronic billboard because that's a year out. So that's kind of off the table. Uh, the crossing guards were adding to that. Um, well, you know, part, also, if I, if I may, part of what we're trying to do is to see where the total, whole council's interest is. Right, that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, so if, if the, uh, like, the, you know, the parking and the billboards are going to take a little while, but mm -hmm. if we, if we uh, decide that's how we want to go, then we can move full speed ahead. Up till now, it was just two guys in the back room saying, mm -hmm. we like this so far. Sounds a little yeah. weird. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only, if, only if your mind's like that. Okay. <laughs> Yes, it is. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, no, that's what I was going to okay. say. Have Brett go through yeah. the list, and you can say, I mean, we've, we've narrowed it down. I think there are certain things. So why don't we go through the list and say for sure what's off the table. Uh, the parcel tax for safety, public safety, no one supports that. Is that correct? Right. Correct. Okay. Uh, an increase in the utilities user tax, no one supports that, correct? Correct. Okay, we like the medical center parking unilaterally, yes? Yes. Okay, and well, the I think that to use Warren's, I'm, I think it's a good idea. I think it kicks it off with the medical center, but looks citywide property. And, I think Dean said the same thing. And, the, and, the, and let's say a five-year cost to, I mean, if, if it nets out that it costs us, you know, half a million, uh, you know, a million dollars to have this uh, and, and replace a year, then it nets out, you know, a negative, and I'm not in favor of that. So okay. I, I, I want to see the, no, the actual numbers down the road. So, so. and we would like to refer that back to the traffic commission to do well, a further study so on the, not on, on the, the total on the span, account. but I think right. the uh, staff has, the you know. For right, and no one supports uh, the cable TV, LATV being uh, taken, correct? Uh, the billboard we all support, but that's a year or so away. Well, that I, I'm sorry. So go back to LA TV. So what? What? what the, I didn't hear the sound track on that one. So can we just kind of go over that? So what, where, well, what do we realize? I gave a little bit of a preview at the last meeting, but I mean, it's just the twenty thousand is just estimated on what has been in past years a drawdown on the fund balance of what's in that cable fund. So what? And as um, 
Mr. Underwood mentioned, and we, the cable fund does take in about 35000 annually. There is easily $35,000 in expenditures, and that's not including capital replacement. So as we're talking about funding for if we continue on with the cable studio and need to refurbish that with equipment and the building itself, there are future costs that are associated with that. So that's why it's on the table. Uh, just to make the council aware that there is a drawdown on fund balance, the cable fund, and eventually it'll hit the general fund. Hmm. So, Dean, oh, I'm sorry. So, so I, I'm still. So, on the on the drawdown fund balance, the roughly 100, 120 thousand in the fund balance for the TV. There's roughly so, 100. So, so in six years, in six years, it'll be zero. At if this, at if this we rate. draw down at 20 thousand, I and mean, we have had a couple of years where there it was um, break even within the peg monies itself. But that doesn't include the filming of the cable, the, the cable commission, or not the cable commission, but the filming of the council meetings. So we have an additional general fund cost associated with that. So again, so just just drawing a straight line, 120,000 now, 20,000 per year at current dollars, which we don't know future dollars are. So in six years, it'll be zero. Roughly, yes. Okay, and so if we were to say we want that on the table on the chopping block and we'll eliminate it. Isn't it kind of um, uh, earmarked for formally that? And so it's really not money to us. It's just avoidance of the expense, right? We just it's say avoidance of future general fund costs. That's what that is. That's, a, that's more of an opportunity cost. There, there is a $20,000 hit to the general fund once the fund balance runs out in the cable fund. So, so after year seven, then we'd be avoiding 20000 well, take into consideration, Warren, that there are expenditures, like John said, there's a list of desired equipment that's going to draw down that fund balance. Of course, so. it'll be quicker. That, so, but I'm, I'm just saying, saying with, no, with no changes, in six years, that, that is basically, I'll, I'll say, bankrupt. It, it, doesn't, it can't sustain itself, right? That's roughly the estimate, yeah. So, it would be down to zero. So I guess the question is, between now and year seven, what do we do? And I think that's maybe that's a question to us. What do we do between now and year seven? Because... It, right now, it, it, it may sustain itself in terms of money coming in, pays expenses, but uh, the, the 20000 goes to what purpose? So if you can re reiterate that, the, the facility itself, the studio? There's a company, the revenues that come in, it's a $1 per household fee that comes that's in. That's 30000 That's the 30000 that, that we spent. receive. That gets spent. Right? right. The money that's spent is so on, on the programming. On the 20000 that's drawing out of the fund balance for LATV, what does that go towards? That is a, it's a combination of the studio, the events that are filmed out, football and other events that are filmed out in the field, and the um, filming of the council meetings themselves, and equipment. I mean, those are all costs that are associated with cable. Okay, so, so the current expenses for um, uh, broadcasting the uh, council, the, uh, the council meetings, um, the events around like, like um, Race on the Base and uh, police officers, State of the City, th those are running at a deficit then because we have to supplement that by drawing down the fund balance on LATV? If we spend more than the $30,000 in a fiscal year, then we're drawing down the fund balance. But isn't that what this says, that we're spending That's what that's saying. That's so, an estimate, yeah. So, so roughly the 30000 income and then 20000 drawdown, so it's about $50,000 a year. Roughly, yeah. So it's a deficit, deficit spending. Uh -huh. So I'm, I, I'm not willing to just not have that. I mean, I think we need to have a discussion. <clears throat> so to get you up to speed what, on that item in the, when we went through it in the ad hoc is that um, there was two kind of observations I think we had. One is that it's a structural deficit. And it, at a bigger picture, um, we haven't been able as a city to get our hands on that whole operation. We've tried to set up a commission. It's been constantly having kind of two different fights going on. Mm -hmm. um, I would say maybe the shot over the bow to LATV from the ad hoc committee was it was serious enough to where, you know, it weighs off, is, is it a distraction? Mm -hmm. Is there other things that the city should be, again, if we're about ready to cut into bone on public safety, or again, parks, I'll go through the list over and over again, then you get to LATV, a critical function in the city, if we can get it right. We've tried two or three different formulas. We can't get the folks to work together. As a council, we don't have time ourselves to be able to manage it. The city manager, when it starts getting involved, their politics get involved of trying to get help. 
So, so then you get down to what is the bare minimum to run, and I think, Warren, that's where you're at, is yeah. if you're just going to use PEG funding, you get 34000 based on that assembly bill that went through, mm -hmm. and we get a certain percent of every subscriber. That pays for you know, this thing being filmed and people to bring tapes into City Hall to be bicycled out, and that's the minimum. We don't charge Rossmore to at least charge 14 grand to you know to be able to do that. So there's areas of opportunity. We never could figure out the revenue model to, to charge for advertising or some you know we've gotten different legal determinations of whether we could. So we haven't even really been able to break the revenue model yet to actually add revenue. I think and from the ad hoc, we think it was worthy to talk about the shot over the bow as it got close as a recommendation to us to actually maybe get rid of the distraction because we can't seem to perfect it. But we didn't feel strongly enough that that we really could do something there at this point uh, because we don't well, you know we haven't really given fair warning at this point to the LATV. It's still kind of in limbo. But but I, I can understand it's not really um, it's not going to be savings to us. It's just going to be at, at some point it's it's going to run out of money. Yeah. And, I, and I think I guess maybe the message to staff is what's the what's the exit uh, plan to to not have this in. Year by year six, because if it can't, if it can't, I mean, it, it can't sustain itself. It's just going to be, you know, uh, uh, red ink. Could I suggest the other side of that question is how do we get LETV to run at a break even? Mm -hmm. So, because they're going to spend that money on equipment given a chance. I think you know there's been several discussions on that. But the, but then that that'll okay. Spending any amount of money. Will shorten that from year six. Now we're at year four, at year three, at year two. Well, right? I mean, yeah, I agree with what you're okay. saying. Mathematically works. I'm just saying if we, if we look at it that the f the fund balance is going to be used to buy equipment, then they're going to have to break even immediately. And I think that we should we should, could be able to agree that that at least should be the minimum okay. direction we give. So, so, the city so, manager. so if I may, so if let me give it in a, in a if then risk statement. If they cannot break even, let's say that they have two years to become profitable. If they cannot break even in two years, then the recourse is liquidate all the equipment, put it up there on eBay or whatever for sale. And I mean, I, yeah, I'm no, serious, I, right? I, I mean, that's yeah. kind of. I, I think we've got to be realistic about it. If we spend, then we just kind of shorten the the margin of time they have to uh, perform. But I, I agree with you know. Councilmember Edgar, it's that we, we've tried and we and we sit on the sidelines, hoping and, and seeing what's going to happen, and you know the, um, the the infighting, the differences of opinions, and uh, the amount of staff time that gets expended on this thing. I, I think it's just not the right thing for us to be focusing on. Well, I think if if I might add to that very quickly, Dean, and then I'll let you go. We're almost to the regular meeting. Um, one of the statements that the council made early on, Troy, I know you were a part of this too. I don't know if the others were on the council. Is that we're not putting any general fund money or reserve money into LATV. And that's where I've come from. As long as they could sustain themselves, then we let them do that. But I do agree with you with the distraction, Warren. Well, but, but again, I'll, I'm going to go back to then with, with that, um, and, and, I'll, and I'll just say, you know, what happens in year seven? What's, what's, the, uh, what's the, um, the, the graceful exit mm -hmm. plan that we have, right? right. I mean, we, we have to have one. I mean, that's just simply put, unless they turn things around, figure out how to work together. And uh, bring in the uh, the revenues that are out there in the community, and then uh, work it. But uh, but I'm 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 ready to say let's let's you know <laughs> let's not re resort to hope because you know in the last uh, three plus years I haven't you know I haven't seen any hope fulfilled on my end. So, mm -hmm. but with that, uh, I'll back to you. Thank you. If you can make it real quick, because I'd like to get through this list. On the LATV thing, one of the things that I don't think is being taken into consideration is the prior nonprofit that was running it built up that reserve when there was extra money coming in before it went down to the dollar a subscriber. So kudos to them to create 150000 in reserve for replacement of equipment. If what was said earlier that they're operating within their $31,000 budget, then there is no seven-year period, with the exception of using money that's in reserves to upgrade equipment which they believe they need. We're trying to manage that from the standpoint of saying when you spend it, it's all gone. Hello, that's the exit plan that he's saying. There needs to be something done. And frankly, from city staff, city council direction, back to the commission, nobody's giving them any direction. 
and at some point that policy needs to be put into effect that says you get 31000 you can only spend 31000 If you use that reserve money over the next seven years and take that $100,000 down, you get to spend $30,000 a year. But in year seven, there is no more money for replacement of equipment. And you're going to have to figure out a revenue stream to do that, or you're not going to get any new equipment. Mm -hmm. So. All right, so let's make it through this list if we can. The billboard we already talked about, that's a year out. Annual cost of the crossing guard at the full amount, we're supportive of. Pay off the side uh, fund liability in CalPERS, we're supportive of that. Um, I, I'm not supportive of eliminating the donated services. Uh, I don't know how many of you are. I know Troy, or where do you stand on that? I've made the recommendation that okay. for the ad hoc that this is where we need to go. Yeah. Okay, and Warren, you support it, Dean? I support it. Um, I, I would still, uh, there's things behind each of those numbers uh -huh. that are not clear, and I'd like to, you know, if it's everybody pays their way, then That's everybody nice. pays their way. Yeah. And is that truly you reserve your right to, to pick it up apart when the right. budget gets verified coming up in June, but directionally, if, if we can That's go. That's fine. Okay, so uh, there's a majority support for eliminating donated service at all special events. Uh, it didn't look like we had any uh, support for the youth center agreement. Um, there was support for pass along the credit card processing cost to the consumer. I don't support that, but I think the other four of you did. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. So that moves along. Uh, conduct a fee study. I don't think we supported that. Uh, consideration implementation of a, uh, I crossed it out. Can admissions, you read admissions tax. Admissions tax. I don't think we had support for that. Is what that correct? What is that? That we put on put that on the table. There's an item on the agenda on the regular agenda tonight that um, is we're bringing forward to the council for consideration and direction. And, and as we move forward, um, you'll hear that item. But admissions tax, we would need to do much more research in terms of could the city receive a percentage of revenue received on an event that is on the table tonight. Okay. Okay. Consideration. From a legal standpoint, we would have to do that research and bring that back. But we wanted to get it on the laundry list. Okay, and this is the last one. Let's just make sure we get through this list. Uh, cuts in appropriations across all departments. We are in support of that. The, the only thing, uh, the three that were mentioned, the TIP, the ACC, OC, and the Human Relations Committee. Wouldn't we be deciding, isn't this just a general list for us to delve into deeper? So we can talk about that at the next meeting. You could get us to break down on what makes it up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's it. All right. So do we uh, continue or adjourn, Carrie? Okay. We adjourn this meeting and we'll be starting the regular meeting at about 6 o'clock.